Hello, my name's David Kemsel. I'm the Managing Director of First Thought Equine and designer of the Wow Saddle. Over the years, it has become evident to us that saddle fitting is a very subjective um, practice. Everybody has their own opinion, everybody has a different way of doing it, and therein sometimes lies a problem. So, we decided a few years ago that we would look into producing something that would take the subjectivity out of saddle fitting and give you, the client, and the retailer the ability to say categorically whether something is going to fit or not. And for you to actually be able to have something that you can use on your own horse to ascertain whether your saddle still fits your horse. Because the biggest problem with saddle fitting is the better that we saddle fit, the more likely it is that your horse will change shape more rapidly. Okay, without further ado, on the table we have a saddle gauge in parts. Now, every aspect of the saddle basically gives you three options. So for instance, our head plates come as what we call V-types, U-types and W-types. Our trees themselves have three curvatures. So we have a flat tree, a semi-curved tree and a curved tree. Um, if you look at the amount of lift we give you on the front of the saddle, we give you either one and a half, or sorry, one, one and a half, or two inches of lift at the front. This is, we designate, and we call these SD, D, or double D type panels. So you're probably familiar with people uh, using that phraseology. Then at the back of the saddle, we give you the ability to raise the back of the saddle by having different gusset heights from one and a half to two to two and a half inches. So all of these things, all of these factors combined give you the ability to specify a saddle that should sit on your horse in balance and allow you and your horse to perform to the best of your ability. So, what we're going to do, we're going to take you through all of the pieces, how they eventually all go together on the horse, and how you can use that to basically ascertain the final specification for your saddle. So first of all, we're going to start with the head plates. Now these represent the different head plate types. We have a V type, a U type, and a W type. And basically, the difference is the radius here at the top of the arch, how wide that actually is. So, you'll also notice this one is an odd shape. It's got this lump here. This is actually because I want you to use this particular one when you're measuring your horse. Because unlike these two that have only got head plate sizes from minus one to three, these have got head plate sizes minus one all the way to nine. And how you can adjust them, as you can see, that's just by pulling these out. As you can see, there is a ball bearing here which shows through a hole, and that hole is numbered to show you the size of the head plate. Now, obviously, both must be set to the same number. We don't want one saying, for instance, minus one, and one saying, whatever it is, three. So, they both must be set the same, and then we can place that on our horse's wither, and we can ascertain by this sitting on the wither, either side, following the, the, the shape of the withers, we can actually ascertain that we need either a size three, a size two, or whatever, to, to fit our horse. Okay. Now, you'll also notice there are three <laughs> sets of magnets on either side, and these allow us to clip these pieces on and give us varying amounts of lift at the front underneath the head plate. We'll come to these later on, but basically these two pieces simulate the depth of the panel at the front of the saddle. These pieces of the gauge 
represent the longitudinal curvature of the tree along the horse's spine. We have to also represent the centre of the saddle's panel and the back of the saddle's panel. Now, at the back, obviously, you can have a saddle which is 16 inches long, 17 inches long, 18 inches long, or 19 inches long. So that's why we have four separate slots here to allow us to adjust for the different sizes of panel stroke seat. Here you see a center arch, and these represent our panels in the center of the saddle. There is no adjustment on these, these are, these are fixed, and it is important you can see that they are actually marked center left and center right, and the same on the arch themselves. So there's no confusion as to which way round they go. It's important to note that you want to put them always with the writing to the writing, in other words, on top of one another, not trying to put it the other way around. This is the back arch. And the back arch has the ability to clip into the uh, spine in four places to represent either a 16, a 17, an 18, or a 19 inch saddle. These represent the back gusset of the saddle, how much lift one has at the back. And you'll see, as I said before, there are three choices, one and a half, two, or two and a half inch. And you'll also note that they also say rear left and rear right on them so that you can get them the right way round and everything's orientated correctly. So, we're gonna start putting this together. I'm gonna to use the semi-curved tree. You've got a thumb clip here, pull back, and I'm gonna slide this in to the 17 inch slot. And you'll notice there's a certain amount of movement here. This represents the amount of adjustment in any one panel. So in other words, you don't just buy a panel when it's a fixed height. You can add more air or more flocking and you can lift the back of the saddle up or down accordingly. Again, another little thumb clip here and that clips into the center. And again, there is a certain amount of play in the center of the saddle. There is not as much as at the back. That's because basically the center of the saddle does not get adjusted in any way the same amount as the back. Right, so always have the, the writing on the center arch and the back arch facing backwards. And always have the representations of the panel, these bits that clip on, also towards the back of the saddle. So there's the start of your saddle simulation, your, or your saddle gauge. I just picked up the U head plate simulator and we've got it set to three. And that would fit here, like so. Now on the front, as I've already told you, we have got three places we can clip the representation of the front of the panel. Now I'm gonna put it in the middle, the D type, that's the most standard, the most common panel type. And you can see now, it's starting to come together. We have three positions the front, the middle, and the rear, where these should be touching the horse. But we don't know whether or not the saddle is actually in balance or not. And this is the crux of it. This is where it becomes important, and this is where subjectivity creeps in. So, to stop the subjectivity creeping in, we have a balance point. This simple pendulum will tell you whether or not your saddle is in balance or not. This part of the gauge is a representation of where the panel will actually touch the horse. It's not the physical size of the panel. That's actually slightly bigger. This is the contact area. Now, when you start to look at this, it looks actually quite complicated because there are lots of lines on here and lots of, of uh, different indicators of, of different things. Primarily, you should look here at these two slots. These are telling you where the scapula of the horse should be. And we also have at the back here, these slots, which tell you whether it's a 16, a 17, or an 18, or a 19 inch saddle. 
So, you can um, use this on the back of the horse to ascertain whether you have enough room for your desired saddle size. Okay, so now we're going to uh, start to put our saddle gauge on our horse to ascertain the fit we require. The thing that you should always remember is you should be going for the middle ground all the time. So in other words, we should use the U-type head plate, the one that's the middle ground, the, the not extremely narrow, not extremely wide. We should be looking to use a semi-curved tree to start off with. We should be looking at using the two-inch option at the back for our gusset. All the time, try and take the middle ground. So, with this one, as I told you before, this is modified to make it easier for us to ascertain the width of the horse. Now, I'm going to stick this to a size one, and I'm going to put it on norm. Now, where do I put it? Well, I need to place this vertically two inches back behind the scapula. Now, if you've got any doubt as to how far that actually is, you can use this. On here, you will notice there is a place which is marked with a vertical line stating head plate. If I put this on Norman and use the one that says back of scapula normal panel, place it here and put it behind the scapula. This is where my head plate should be sitting. This is the angle that we want. So we can see now, with our head plate selection of one, when I place this on, you can see it's not actually following the angle of his back at all. So I am going to make this wider and make sure they're both saying size two. And when I place it on now, you can see the angle fits perfectly. And just to prove it, I'm now going to go to three. And I would always advise you to do this, just don't accept what you've got. And you'll see now, it's not touching at the base. So, this is, the, this is obviously a horse that needs a size two. A size two what though? We don't know whether it's a U, a V or a W at this point. All we've ascertained at the moment is we have a size two head plate. Here you see we have a semi-curved spine, we have our center arch with our panel simulation in the middle, and we have the back arch or rear arch, and we have our panel, panel simulation or gusset simulation, rear gusset simulation set to our middle magnet, which is two inches. Okay, I'm not worried about the head plate at this stage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just try and place this on the horse, roughly in the right place, and I want to see if it's anywhere near balancing. And you can see we are reasonably close. Now if I lift up the back of the saddle just slightly, you can see I can get reasonably close to this. Okay, so, what do I need in front to keep this balanced? So now I'm gonna put my head plates on. So this is a U head plate, size two, and we're going to clip it onto the front of our saddle gauge. Now we need some panels at the front because all we've effectively got at the moment is a head plate. So I'm going to clip, again, using the middle ground, the middle one, the D panel. And I am going to put this on the horse. Now, roughly where we think it should be sitting. And Just gonna get him to stand up square. That's actually not that bad at all. So we have the balance point 
So we have a 2U head plate. We know we have a D panel in front. We're touching here. We are touching here. Everything is perfectly still. Now, just while we're here, what happens if the horse raises its back? And you'll see if I tickle his tummy and he raises his back up, the pendulum stays in place. Horse does not lift just purely from behind, it lifts right the way through. So the, the rib cage comes up but stays at the same angle. Okay, so now what I've done <clears throat> is I've chosen the curved tree just to show you that there is a difference. And we've still got our size two head plate and on a U-type um, head plate. We've still got our D panel. Everything is exactly the same at the back. We've still got our two and a half, uh, sorry, two inch gusset at the back. We're gonna put it on the horse and we're gonna see whether this fits. So again, we're putting it in the same position and you can see instantly this whole thing doesn't fit. It's now completely out of balance and is rocking forward. To get this in balance, I must bring the front of the saddle up, lastly. To do that, I must make the front of the saddle narrower. Now I have got a U-type head plate at the moment. So if we now take a V-type, set it to two, I'm gonna take this off and put a V-type head plate onto this saddle. You can now see we have, still not perfect, but it's, a, it's nearly balanced. But again, I'm not exactly happy with the overall balance of this saddle. If I go to a double D panel, put this on the horse, and now all of a sudden we have a saddle that balances. So you can see, you can have different options, but you want to try and stay, as I said, in the middle ground if you can. So the semi-curved tree on this horse works very well. A curved tree, I have to start using more extreme types of panel to get the saddle to balance. So this time I've chosen the flat tree. I've still got my U head plate, size two, a D type panel, two inch gusset at the back, still set as a 17 inch. I'm gonna put this on the horse now. Instantly we can see, as we would anticipate I suppose, because we've got a flat tree, it's not touching in the middle, there's no contact. The panel or the saddle is sitting now too far behind and I want to bring the back of the saddle up but the more I bring the back of the saddle up the less it touches in the middle. This saddle would bridge on this horse which is quite obvious because it is a flat tree and he isn't suitable for a flat tree saddle. Here we have our panel contact area and you can see I've put this behind the scapula here the back of the scapula normal panel lastly and then I've come back and what I'm looking at is the 17 inch panel. And this is where the 17 inch panel will end. And it coincides with where his last rib is, which is where the coat growth is basically growing forward and growing back and where the two merge, that is where we would have our last rib or roughly our last rib. It's a very good indicator of how long you can have your saddle. 18 inches would be far too long, and as you can see, 19 inches, ridiculous. So this horse can just take a 17 inch panel. Okay, on here, we have two, two lines that run longitudinally. One says without tabs, and one says with tab. Uh, and we also have marked on here, wide gullets, extra wide gullets, wide gullets with tab, and extra wide gullets with tab. Okay, what does all this mean? Basically, it's the width between your panels. So what we're going to do now is you need to use the tree simulator on top. So we're gonna put this on here because this pulls 
everything up into place. So as you can see now, just needs a little bit of fiddling to get it in the right place. There's the center of our saddle. There's where the head plate should be. That's behind the scapula. And you can see the contact area basically stops just before the top of the withers. Now on this horse, that's exactly what we want because if the contact area was to actually stop just here, we would have the potential to dig the corner of the panel into the horse's shoulder and that's not what we want. Okay, so we definitely can see from this, our contact area has to be level with the top of the withers. Always bear that one in mind and you'll never go wrong. Now, we want this width. What sort of width do we want in the middle of our saddle? If I pick this up and we have a look, I think it'll become quite evident. At the moment, he looks quite narrow. If you take both thumbs and you just gently tickle and start to actually ask the horse to tense, and you'll see the musculature is actually very wide. So at this point here, I need that much width. So I have to use an extra wide gullet on this horse because otherwise I would effectively be trapping his musculature. So an extra wide gullet will come all the way out here. And that is, so this is what this uh, contact area shows you is which type of panel you require. So to run through it, we picked a U head plate and he actually stayed in a U head plate with a semi-curved tree. A D-type panel in front and two inch gusset behind. Sat the saddle in balance on the horse. And you can see I can subtly adjust that balance, but we're fine, it's good. I know that I can only get a 17 inch panel on this horse because that's what the contact area shows me. The only thing that I don't know at the moment now is the girthing. And that's what these little holes are for. These represent your girth straps. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide these into here and hook them on. And I'm going to use them as a, what we call a double V setup. And you will see this horse's girth groove falls here. Yet you can see this strap is not really following. I would have to pull these straps forward to actually get them and unnaturally forward into the girth groove. So, if I take this front strap off and I put it here, this simulates what's called the point strap. Now if we look at the picture, that now falls into the girth groove. So, I can now even ascertain what type of girthing I require. So I've got a point strap on a 17 inch saddle with a 17 inch panel, size two, U head plate, D panel type in the front, two inch gusset behind. Everything perfect should be balanced. By using this method, you can ascertain the specification of a saddle that you require for your horse. The retailer can then send you that saddle if you are remote, in the middle of Australia and no retailers about, or the retailer can use this to actually check the balance of your, of your fit and more importantly if you have one of these gauges as well you can maintain the balance and fit of your saddle or at least even if you don't do the maintenance you can at least check and see when something is going wrong you haven't got to think oh well I'll wait another three months before the horse starts to back off you can just get your gauge out put it on the horse and see whether or not your saddle needs attention or not. There's only one final thing that I haven't explained, and that's why there are two uh, places for the scapula. Now we do a panel which we call an extended forward panel. Now this would be used on a horse with a very long back. Now, in that case, what you're gonna do, and I say a long back, but say with a petite rider, so a horse that could ta easily take an 18 inch saddle, but the rider only wants a 16 or maybe a 17 inch saddle. 
What you would do is you would place the contact area behind the scapula where it says back of scapula extended panel here. And what that has done is it's moved everything back three centimetres. So now where you are going to try and make the saddle gauge balance and fit is not five centimetres behind the scapula, but eight centimetres behind the scapula. And so the whole reading and the whole balance will be different. But basically what you're doing is you're picking up the tree and you're moving it <coughs> backwards on the horse. Okay, so in the rare instance that you get a horse that has a very long back and you want a smaller saddle, then you may use that uh, position. Otherwise, most of you are gonna be using the normal position here to actually uh, position your saddle.